In 2020, the hot watches are nearly impossible to get. If you're shopping for a Rolex steel sports model, or a Royal Oak, or a Patek steel sports model, even getting on the waiting list is considered a privilege. So what are you gonna do? Go on the grey market and pay double or triple the retail price? Or is there another option? What would happen if you would go directly to the mother country where all these watches are made? If you would take a trip to Switzerland and walk into a store there, what are your chances of actually getting the watch you want? Well, luckily I'm uniquely qualified to answer that question. I'm living in Switzerland my whole life and I'm currently on waiting lists at Rolex, Audemars Piguet and Patek Philippe. Before we get into it, quick wristwatch check. Since we're talking about how to get pieces today, I'm wearing my Hulk. By the way, it took me about two days to acquire this watch, but uh, that's a crazy story for another day. All right, so as I've mentioned, I live in Switzerland and I am on waiting lists currently for the Pepsi, the new Royal Oak with the blue dial and the Aquanaut from Patek Philippe. Now, these are all pieces that are nearly impossible to get. As I said, even getting on a waiting list is a challenge these days. But all these manufacturers are located in Switzerland and they're quite proud of their Swiss heritage. So you would think their home market would get some beneficial treatment, right? So let me tell you about my experience in trying to buy these watches to find out if it's really easier in Switzerland to get the hot pieces than in the rest of the world. So let's start with the Pepsi. Um, well, I went to two Rolex ADs in Switzerland for this watch. The first one is, is a, a local AD in a small town I live in and they actually wouldn't even put me on the list. They told me there's no chance. They didn't even ask me if I had previous history with the AD, if I had ever bought a watch there, nothing. So, well, I had to accept that. A few weeks later, I thought about starting to develop a relationship with this authorized dealer to increase my chances of, of ever getting a Pepsi. At that time, I was thinking about buying a, a gold piece and I thought, well, I mean, if I spend like 30 to 40,000 bucks on a gold piece, they surely get me on the fast track for a Pepsi. So I went to the store again and uh, to tell you what happened, I have to describe the store to you. So the store is on two floors and it's a rather small surface area on the ground floor. So uh, that's basically like the, um, the entrance, like the greeting point where people come to uh, pick up stuff or just for, for very brief conversations and questions. And then there's the first floor where they have a nice seating area, some tables to display watches, jewelry and so on. And usually if they see you're interested in buying something, they take you up there, they offer you a drink, you can sit down and, and look at your options. So I got in there and was looking at gold Daytonas and day dates. For about 20 minutes I was standing there looking at pieces for about $40,000 and they wouldn't even invite me upstairs to the first floor. They have absolutely no interest in selling any Rolex pieces, even if it's solid gold. They didn't treat me bad, but it was very clear to me that as a Rolex buying customer, you're worthless to them. You're worthless. They do not appreciate you one bit. So needless to say, I walked out and I will never ever buy anything in that store. So I thought to myself, well, let's try a second one. So I went to Zurich, the biggest city in Switzerland to a very reputable and very big AD. Um, I walked in, talked about the watch and well, I got on the waiting list, but they told me it's a waiting period of four to six years, which if you don't know, actually means you will never ever freaking get this watch. So if you think about taking a trip to Switzerland to get your Rolex faster, well, there's no chance. Uh, by the way, I have to add, that second store, I had history there. I've already purchased a Submariner there back in 2008, um, but they weren't overly impressed by that. Anyway, so now let's talk about the uh, Royal Oak. You would think out of the three pieces that I've mentioned, the Royal Oak is the one that's easiest to get, right? 
After all, if you look at the second market prices um, at Chrono 24, they are averaging at about uh, 32,000, I think. Those prices at Chrono 24, by the way, you uh, have to take with a grain of salt. According to my experience, the average price for a piece there lies about 20% above the prices that are actually being paid for the piece. So let's deduct 20% and we are at about 24, 25,000 Swiss francs. By the way, Swiss francs and US dollar is about the same at the moment. Now the retail price for this watch is at 20,500 Swiss francs. So that's only a premium for, what, $4,000? So you would think it's pretty easy to get it. Maybe three months waiting? Well, I got my name on the list in April 2009. Currently, it's May 2020. So that's already over a year and I have not heard from them. Actually, I went to the store a few months ago and asked about it. And, well, at, at Odimar Piguet, they don't tell you how long you have to wait. But you'll get a feel of it when you talk to them. And I was talking to a very nice lady. Customer service there is very good. However, she let me read between the lines that I at least have to wait for another two years for this piece. Now let's talk about the Patek Philippe Aquanaut. Um, first I visited a store in Zurich and well, they basically laughed me out of the door. <laughs> no chance to get on the waiting list there. They had it closed since about 2018. So I did some research and I found another authorized dealer in a rather small city of Switzerland and they just had acquired the right to, to sell Patek Philippe watches about three months ago. And I assumed, well, surely Patek will supply them with a surplus of watches in the beginning to bind some new customers. So I went there and they actually had one in the store. They had an Aquanaut in the store tried it on, I was real happy about it, told the lady there that I want to close the deal, very nice lady by the way, customer service at that tech store was very good, but she replied, well, excuse me, but you cannot get this watch. We're gonna have to put you on a waiting list. All right, well, I put my name down, and that was in May 2019, so exactly a year ago now, and I'm still waiting. I've not heard from them yet, and Maybe I never will. So bottom line, as a customer in Switzerland, you will not be treated better by these brands. You will not get your watch faster. You will not pay less. You have zero benefits at all. So don't feel bad if you can't buy the watch that you want. We're sharing the same fate all over the world. Just have some patience. And in the end, the longer the wait, the sweeter the taste if you actually get the chance to buy your watch. Anyway, if you like this video and want to learn more about the world of watches, please subscribe to the channel.